All right, happy, 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 beautiful, amazing evening all. Dr. Bob Rakowski here. Uh, we're gonna address the topic of how to create a multi-million dollar business, multi-million dollar residual business part-time while doing a lot of other things. Uh, I pride myself on being a really good student. So Pat Quinn, Pete Vargas, they talk about you know their story uh, framework. You wanna basically start with a heart opening story, then go with some facts, then a call to action, uh, and then close with a heartwarming story. And so, you know, we'll do that. And since this is training, Pat Quinn says, you know, in your introduction, you want to accomplish a few things. Look, I'm ordinary. I'm just like you. Number two, I'm extraordinary. I figured it out. Uh, and then three, here's what I figured out and my why. So first and foremost, I'm a family man. Uh, I've been married 33 years, have an absolutely beautiful wife, wonderful children, uh, and two and one third granddaughters. So I've treated world champion athletes from every major professional sport. I've also treated the other end of the spectrum. Uh, and I've taught over 10,000 hours of seminars to doctors all over the world. You know, my mentor has always told me that I should have a backup plan. And you know what? I, I had a scare about seven years ago in the form of an x-ray report. I had a shoulder injury. I had an x-ray. Uh, and I got the report just as I was leaving town and it said, look, we see something in the upper arm we don't like, we're gonna recommend a bone scan. Well, if you're a doctor, you never like to read that because they think there's metastatic cancer. Uh, and it's very concerning when it's your own shoulder. And again, I was leaving town for seven days. There's no way I could have any follow-up. So for seven days, I was wondering, okay, now what? What if I have a short time to live? Now, this is a principle that I knew if your business depends on you, then you're basically one mishap away from being out of business. And my family's security was one mishap away. So I don't know if you ever thought about what if your time is running out, what would you do? Uh, and I love this book by Gary Keller, The One Thing, and he repeatedly asks throughout it, what is the one thing that I can do? that in doing so would make everything else either easier or unnecessary. Uh, and in that week, the thing that kept dancing through my head is your network is your net worth. It's really time to start building this network. By the way, the great news is it turned out to be, you know, just you know, a surgical artifact on the, on the film. So that was good. So I didn't have metastatic cancer, but it got me into action and I stayed in action. I also love Les Brown. He says, you know, who are you? What do you have and why should I listen to you? So there's a graph of my entire network marketing career every single month for 109 months. Uh, and you can see that there's a very consistent growth curve. Uh, and the reason for that is simple. We are very consistent about building the business. We do income producing activities every single day uh, and therefore our income increases. So I have found six ways to make seven figures. So I've done it as a chiropractor. I've done it as a nutritionist. I've done it as an educator. I've done it with educational products. I've done it in real estate. And I've also done it in network marketing. Uh, you know, that's one of those funny things. You know, would you rather figure out six ways to make 1 million or one way to make 25 million? You know, and, and so... Um, you know, for what it's worth, I, I, I like all six, but it would sure be nice to have that one way to earn 25 million. So since I've seen most sides of business, I can tell you that Eric Worre is absolutely right. This is a better way. Rise of the Entrepreneur is dedicated to that phenomenal documentary, 25 world experts all sharing the idea that you know what, network marketing is real, it's viable, it's profitable, it's been around for 70 years, it's here to stay. And ordinary people with above average work ethics can make extraordinary income. So I have three goals in about the hour we're gonna spend. One, I wanna make the time worthwhile. Two, I wanna share strategies that work and I wanna share actions that can make you more successful today and every day. Harvey McKay has been on Eric Worre's stage many, many times. Uh, he's considered by many the best networker of our day. He's got a number of books. His first book was called How to Swim with the Sharks and Not Be Eaten Alive. But really, all of his books could have the same title, Prepare to Win. 
And as Zig Ziglar would say, you've got to plan to win, you've got to prepare to win, you've got to expect to win, uh, and then you will win. One of Harvey McKay's biggest messages is invest in coaches. Coaches are absolutely worth their weight in gold. Now, quick summary of what I teach people about how to get healthy. I tell them you've got to eat right, drink right, think right, move right, sleep right, poop right, talk right every single day. I call those the magnificent seven. And when it comes to life, I let people know that we are mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, social, financial, uh, and impactful beings. Now, in any area that you want to excel, you can get coaches that excel in those areas and take your game to the next level. So I've trained with grandmasters in mixed martial arts. Uh, and one day my grandmaster was training with me and he says, you know, Bob, I've got a question for you. I want you to describe success using three and only three words. So I'd thought about that for a while and I said, okay, I've got it, health, happiness, and prosperity. He says, well, that's a good answer, but you know what? My mentors taught me something different. Uh, and you know how there's in real estate, the rules for success are location, location, and location. I believe in life, the rules for success are relationships, relationships, and relationships. You know, I remember that conversation like it was yesterday and he's absolutely right. It's all about relationships. So you look at what Eric Worre's accomplished. I mean, getting an interview with Larry King, the greatest interviewer potentially of all time, the way you do that is by creating great relationships. Great relationships, you get a great life. John Maxwell's been on the, Gro the GoPro stage. And I love this quote from him. He says, policies are many, principles are few. Policies will change, principles never do. Then Eric taught us, you know what? Leaders speak three languages, stories, assignments, and challenges. So we're gonna incorporate that throughout this presentation. In this talk like TED book and audio book, you know, TED Talks may be the most successful speeches ever, billions, literally billions of views. The first commandment of TED is thou shalt tell stories. So interesting book title, Change Your Day, Not Your Life. And, and you know what, that's very true. You, you're gonna have to change your day to ultimately make gains. And I like the title, Improve Your DMO, Your Daily Method of Operation, and Improve Your Life. So here's the DMO that I use and that I promote. One, be a product of your product or products. The more, the better. You've gotta be absolutely in love with your product. Uh, Fraser Books will be training next month on social media, but here's his strategy in order. You want to collect friends, you want to collect decisions, then you want to collect commissions. Uh, and that's what I attempt to do, you know, make connections with people, make them a friend. By the way, he also says he wants to turn strangers into friends, friends into family. Uh, and that's when you're ultimately successful. Once you make those friends, you know, get a conversation, have an opportunity talk, get a decision, then a commission, invest in yourself every single day. You wanna get better, stronger, faster, smarter, and possibly the ultimate skill is to become a master promoter. The story of Don King is epic. Uh, if you're a boxing fan, you know who he is, but he earned more money than almost every boxer in the history of the game, yet he never took a punch. Uh, and he was a master promoter. Eric Worre is a master promoter. I'm certainly working on being a master promoter. And by the way, the next major event is going to be the most powerful women in network marketing, uh, mpw2021.com. Everybody should register. We need to pack the room for that. So this is your first assignment and challenge. Be a product of your product. Collect in order, friends, decisions, commissions. Find a way to work on yourself every single day and become a master promoter. Darren Hardy's got a book called The Compound Effect, and he tells the story of three college buddies. You know, they play basketball together and they meet at a college reunion uh, and they realize, you know what, none of them are in playing shape and, you know, they kind of miss that. And so one guy says, you know what, I'm going to get back to training. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back into my playing weight. I'm going to eat right. I'm going to get a trainer. You know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to where I was. Another guy basically stayed on the same trajectory. He says, you know, I'm pretty comfortable where I'm at. The other guy basically became a wine connoisseur and started binging on Netflix. Well, when they met 10 years later, 
the guy that decided to get in shape got in shape. He was back to his playing weight, back to his playing skills. He was feeling great. And in fact, every aspect of his life picked up. He was better, stronger, faster, smarter, wealthier, uh, and happier. The guy that stayed on the same path, well, he declined about another decade. And what about the guy that became the wine connoisseur and the Netflix binger? Well, he was 100 pounds overweight, divorced, unemployed, clinically depressed, taking a bunch of medications, I am wondering where things went wrong. So these things do compound. Einstein called compounding the eighth wonder of the world. And this is Gwyneth Paltrow on the left as she is. And on the right, she's actually in a fat suit in the movie Shallow. How? But keep in mind, the difference between left and right could just be six minutes of intense exercise every day for 20 years. Six minutes can make that difference. By the way, it could also be one extra piece of bread every day for 20 years. Or what if you did both? Well, you could make that difference in 10 years. And by the way, in either direction, it compounds. I love Sachin Patel's quote, consistency carves canyons. So you look at this little trickle of water, right? I think it's the Colorado River. Uh, and look at that beautiful formation. Consistency does that. So here's an interesting principle. Little wins are the secret to big successes. Eric Worre said this many, many times. If a distributor earns a dollar their first month, just a dollar, one dollar, there's an 80% probability they'll still be in the business six months later. If they don't earn that dollar, that probability that they're still in six months later drops to 20%. I was at Eric's home and I asked him, you know, can the wind be too small? And Eric kind of sat back and he, you know, stroked his goatee and he said, you know what? I, I don't think so. A win is a win. Get them that win. So we probably all heard about the penny a day, right? You start day one with a penny and at the end of a 31 day month, you've got over $10 million. Pretty epic there. Uh, and Seinfeld used this strategy to earn uh, essentially a billion, right? You look at his net worth, they say $950 million. That's a stone's throw away from a billion. But he'd write a joke every single day. Uh, and the, probably the joke is his first one probably wasn't very good. And maybe his hundredth wasn't very good. But I tell you what, his 10,000th was really, really good. Uh, and what if it takes you more time to develop your skills? So I want you to look at this for a moment, right? Let's you say you take that penny and you wait a year to double it. And then another year to double it. And another year to double it. Well, guess what? 31 years later, you will have that $10 million. Dollars, uh, and you've developed yourself over that period of time. So you know what? If you're a little slower, who cares? Compounding is magic. Just keep moving forward. Uh, and these are pictures of Eric's jet and his home. And I was actually at this party, uh, right? But here's the deal. He said it worked so well for him that he just kept doing it. He kept growing that little bit every single day. Uh, and then here's the question, you know, do you want to know his secret formula? And here it is, plan, do, review, plan, do, review. Every project, every day, every project, every day, plan, do, review. That is the formula, right? Plan your day, plan your hour of power, do it, and then look back at it and say, okay, what could I do better? And then multiples of 10 are nice, right? You get your first 10, then when they get their 10, that's 100, then 1,000, then 10,000, you know, the first one is probably the hardest. The first 10 is the hardest. And then getting that duplication going. You know, Eric said, I think he floundered around for about four or five years studying under the pros. But then when he got it, he got it. And look at what it's done for him. So here's this two prospecting stories. And they're very, very similar, right? Someone's got a, a, just a, a fortune not too far away. The other person's not close, but they're going to keep going for it. Who are you betting on, right? I'll tell you the story right now. This is the guy that wins. So this was me. I was, I was uh, selling door to door when I was 18 years old. And I knocked on a door and this woman was, you know, just very engaged in what I was telling her. I was the top salesperson for the company. I was hungry. I was teachable. I was coachable. I was trainable. Uh, and she looked at me. She said, wow, you would be great in my business. So I asked her, you know, what's your business? And she said, oh, I'm partnered with multiple multimillionaires. They're teaching me to become independently wealthy in the next five to 10 years. And in fact, if you want to know what they're teaching me, you can join us here tomorrow at 7.30 for a business meeting. 
She says, you know what? I would dress sharp. Come on up, be ready to take notes. I'll introduce you to my millionaire friends. Well, I went to that meeting. It was an Amway meeting. They draw the, they drew the circles. You know, my first degree is engineering. I'm a math major. I understand math. And I looked at it and I said, wow, you know what? That's absolutely fantastic. But Mark Yarnell hadn't written that book yet, your first year in network marketing. And he warns people, you know, when you get excited about this, you need to expect rejection rockets is what he calls them. Uh, and so guess what? I went home after that and I talked to my uh, brother-in-law. He was an absolute genius. He was a chess champion. He was a big eight firm accountant. You know, I really respected him. And after I, I shared it with him, he looked at me and says, you know, trust me, Bob, you don't want to do it. That's Amway. I still have a garage full of Amway soap. So you don't want to do this. Well, that was prospect one, right? So I never did it. I never did it. That woman never followed up with me. My son, Jacob, this was at his high school graduation. He started his network marketing career before then. But I literally told Jacob no at least 700 times. Now, where do I get that 700? He'd ask me at least twice a day for about a year. That's at least 700 times. But he did get me to carry the products in my office. And he said, you know, dad, if I can create a way to sell the products in the office uh, and you don't won't have to do anything, would you let me do that? And I said, you know what, sure. So uh, Jacob trained my staff about how to share the products. Patients would come in and give them a sample. They would say, wow, I really like that. Well, guess what? The first month we sold over $1,000. Then second month, a couple thousand, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. You know, it really started to get my attention. Uh, and then while I was on the lecture circuit, Jacob asked me, you know, would you share samples uh, with your audience? Well, I asked my sponsor, you know, look, my son's got this business. <clears throat> would you mind, you know, if I shared some of his samples? And the sponsor said, no, go for it. So literally, just before a break, I'd say, look, my son's got this new business. He asked me if I'd share some samples. If anybody wants some, you know, take some, try it, right? So they come back the next day and they go, wow, this is really, really good. How do I get more of it? I'd say, hey, call Jacob, right? I didn't handle any of it. I just said, call Jacob. So little did I know that he put 30 people on my left, 30 people on my right. He signed them up uh, basically as wholesale buyers. He qualified for his uh, company Mercedes. That's the plan they had back then, six months into the business. you know. So I was absolutely impressed that he was growing a heck of a business and qualified for a Mercedes Benz. Well, Kelly drove his car and she said, you know what? I, I really like that car. I want one. And I said, well, okay. Well, we did it the old fashioned way. We just went and bought one. So then we went out to dinner with some friends and, you know, we hadn't seen them for a while. And, and they looked at us and said, wow, nice ride. You're really step, stepping up your game. What, what inspired you to get that? You know, and, and Kelly said, well, we really like Jacob's Benz. And they looked confused. They said, well, Jacob has a Benz. Yeah. Well, how does he have a Benz? You know, I, I thought he was a student. Well, he is a student. Well, how does he have a Benz? So he's got this part-time thing, you know, really great products. You know, what kind of products, right? So we gave him some samples. They said, that's amazing. How do we learn more? I said, call Jacob. So literally Jacob signed him up and that was our very first leader. That couple became our first Sapphires. So there's Jacob on stage getting his $100,000 ring. He does have that kind of vertical, pretty amazing. But by the way, that was before his 21st birthday. Uh, and we went to Eric Worre's Beyond Leadership together. Uh, he was the youngest six-figure earner in the room. Then he met his soulmate, uh, Megan. Absolutely beautiful, wonderful, best you could ask for, daughter-in-law, mother, uh, and guess what? Mother of number two coming very, very soon. And one of Jacob's claims to fame is the first hundred days that he and Megan were dating, he didn't even work a minute. But in those 100 days, he earned more money than he had in any other 100 days of his life. So guess what? This business does work and it works like a champ. That was a few weeks ago in our backyard. We had a big gender reveal. And guess what? We've got another beautiful baby girl coming. But here's one of the lessons I learned. There's three types of people you can listen to. Someone who's never tried, someone who's tried and failed, and someone who kept trying and succeeded. And once I learned that, I realized, holy cow, I took my advice from a guy that tried and failed. And I started talking to people that succeeded, and I was beyond amazed. So remember our DMO, be a product of the products, collect in order, friends, decisions, commissions. Uh, by the way, the way I do that 
is I have about 5,000 Facebook friends. 15 of them are going to have a birthday about every day, a few days in advance. I'm, I wish them a happy birthday, but I look on their line, on, uh, on their Facebook page. I make some comments. You know, when I wish them a happy birthday, I say, look, you know, I, I saw your post. Thank you for making the world better. Thank you for standing for truth. You, you have beautiful children. You must be an awesome mom, something like that. Uh, and then they reply back. And then we start exchanging back and forth. And then ultimately I say, you know, you sound pretty amazing. Uh, I, I like to catch up with my friends. Do you have time for a five minute conversation? And they often say yes, right? So we could do it by a Facebook messenger or call. But then ultimately my conversation is how are you? What are you doing? You know, what are your goals? What are your challenges? And then maybe we get to an if I would you, right? If I, if I had a way where I think you could achieve that goal or, or get away from that challenge, you know, would you be willing to invest seven minutes or 20 minutes to watch a video? Uh, and then guess what? We follow that up. Every day I invest in myself, every day, every day, try to get better, stronger, faster, smarter. And every day I'm promoting something. So here's the question, which prospector are you, right? So this was my son, Jacob, 700 no's, but oh, he hit the mother load, didn't he? Uh, and he's a seven figure earner in network marketing or the person that could have had me at 18. Boy, I'll tell you what, I could have done something with that, but never, ever, ever followed up. So here's a principle, all business is a conversation. Here's your assignment, start more conversations and keep them going. Uh, and here's your challenge, right? Start one new conversation today and every day. Don't break that chain. All business is a conversation. Here's another principle, we all have more resources than we're utilizing. Remember the first 60 people that I signed up. I didn't sign up. The first leader, I didn't sign up. Hey, talk to Jacob. Hey, talk to Jacob. Hey, talk to Jacob. So guess what? If you are, are not having much success, you might say, look, I'm helping out a friend. They've got this business. I told them I'd help them make the world better. Sample them and say, how do I learn more? Talk to my friend. That's the magic of the three-way call. I love this quote. The great spirit is everywhere. He hears whatever is in our minds and in our hearts. It is not necessary to speak to him in a loud voice. What a great thought. So, you know, I read this long ago that success is partnering with infinite. Infinite is available to all of us. So here's my suggestion, partner with infinite. Here's another thing. There's absolutely a solution for everything. So Tim Sales, I love his story. He was a former military bomb uh, diffuser and he answered an a ad basically a written ad for, you know, a business and it said training included. And since they were training, he said, look, I know how to be trained. I've been trained to do things. Uh, I'll learn about it. So this guy tells him about, oddly enough, new skin, right? Imagine this beastie Navy uh, demolition bomb guy selling skincare, but guess what? He made millions, millions doing it. But when he was talking to the guy, he probably had this menacing look. He said, you need to tell me everything and I mean everything or I will take you out. He says, tell me all the bad, all of it. If you leave anything out, you're basically in trouble. So first problem is people are gonna reject you, right? They're gonna tell you no. Uh, and he says, okay, then what happens? He says, well, you talk to more people. Well, the next thing people are gonna deceive you, right? They'll tell you one thing and they'll do another. He says, okay, what do I do then? He says, well, you actually talk to more people. Third problem is you're gonna have attrition. And that means that people are gonna quit. He says, well, what do I do then? He says, well, you actually talk to more people. And the fourth thing is, you know, people are going to disrespect you, right? They might basically say you're part of something illegal or whatever. And Tim says, well, what do I do then? He says, well, you actually talk to more people. So Tim says, wait a minute, you mean to tell me you make more money every month than I make in a year of diffusing bombs? And you're telling me the answer to every problem is to talk to more people? And the guy says, yeah, <laughs> well, guess what? Tim said, I'm in. And he's made many, many millions as a network marketer. Uh, and, and then I, I love this story from John uh, Harimza a few weeks ago. He said, look, you know, um, Jeff Roberti has a way of handling problems. When people would bring a problem to Jeff, here's what he'd say. Yeah, you know what? I get that. The same thing happened to me. The way I got past it was to talk to more people. So guess what? Uh, happened to me, right? I mean, it probably has. The guy's earned $100 million. The answer is talk to more people. So here's a principle. Success leaves clues. So basically study people you admire and want to be like. So here are some of my mentors, 
Many of them, maybe all of them are the same as Eric Worries, John Harims, uh, and many others, but Earl Nightingale, Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, Tony Robbins, Tom Morris, Eric Worry, uh, and I'll talk through their magic teaching. So Earl Nightingale created a, war, a rewarding, uh, a rewarding, a recording, which was very rewarding, called The Strangest Secret in the World. This was the, probably the first audio recording of its kind, sold over a million copies in 1956. Uh, and here's the summary, we become what we think about most of the time. And he said, that's the strangest secret. So we wanna be very selective about what we think about. Now, this is a Carl Jung quote. Um, he says, until we make the unconscious conscious, it will direct our life and you will call it fate. So how can you start getting past that subconscious bad programming? Well, Bruce Lipton says there's three ways. Number one is full presence. So, you know, imagine when you're absolutely in love and I hope someone has that experience. How easy is it to get along? How easy is it to honor the other person? How easy is it to put their interest first? Well, we should in some respect fall in love with our prospects, fall in love with our opportunities, fall in love with the opportunity to share uh, and that type of presence will definitely pay big dividends. Or we could do it like Michael Phelps, train way harder than everybody else, most decorated Olympian of all time. By the way, he would train hard and sleep hard every single day. Or Jim Rohn talked about the day his life turned around. Basically, some Girl Scouts knocked on his door selling cookies. Uh, he was too embarrassed to tell him he didn't have $2. So he said, you know, look, I already bought cookies for my niece. Well, he walked away from the door and he, he thought, my gosh, how low can I sink? I just lied to Girl Scouts. I need to do something different. Well, that's when he met Earl Shope. That's when he started network marketing. And in the next six years, Jim Rohn became a millionaire in the 1960s. I want you to think about that. That's when a million dollars was uh, probably worth a little more than it is today. One of Jim's famous stories was the sower and the seed. And you know what, you should YouTube that because he tells it so amazingly. But I like this story of the sower and the seed. So rather than just sowing seed randomly, why don't we take the time to prepare the soil? So here's a fact, preparing the soil is absolutely back breaking work. It is, right? What are you gonna do? You, you just prepare, prepare, prepare. Uh, you get rid of the rocks, you get rid of the thorns. And what do you get for your preparation? Well, nothing, right? Now you've earned the right to plant. And think about planting, right? You've got to dig some holes, you got to plant them, you got to get the right spacing, everything else. Again, backbreaking work. And what do you get? Nothing. Uh, and then you've got to protect. As Jim Rohn says, you know, leave the garden alone, the weeds will take it. That's just the way it goes. So then we have to protect. And by the way, what's our reward yet? Absolutely nothing. But when we do those things right, then the fourth P is production. Production. We get our harvest. Uh, and if we prepared well, planted well, protected well, well, then we get an abundant harvest. Now I'll go to Confucius. He says, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is right now. But why not say the best time to plant a tomato plant was 20 years ago? And here's the reason. Uh, any type of plant that produces fruit in a single season dies after that season. So think about all the people that are flashes in the pan. Uh, I don't think we want to be a flash in the pan, right? They come, okay, cool, that was nice while well, it lasted, but it doesn't last long. Let's get good roots, good foundation, and have a harvest for a lifetime. Now we have Tony Robbins, uh, and I like to call this S cubed, like Superman cubed, but you've got your state, you've got your story, and you've got your strategy, and Tony's big in all of those. And I like people to score themselves. You know, what's your physiologic state? How's your energy? How's your health? How's your vitality? How's your credibility? How's your posture? Uh, and then your story, right? And, you know, my next diamond is around the corner. My next diamond's around the corner. I might have met my next diamond this weekend, met an amazing guy that's just excited to join the team. Uh, and then finally, what's your strategy, right? Rate that zero to 10, you multiply them out. Remember a zero anywhere gives you a zero in a multiplying factor. But you wanna be energized and powered and Harvard now has found out that when you take an energized posture, you improve your power hormones, you decrease your stress hormones. And how about this story? I'm going to the top. If you haven't listened to Eric Worre's talk, um, you know, where he gives this keynote speech at a convention at age 29, it launched his entire life. He's going to the top. Let that be our story or similar. 
And then finally, don't reinvent the wheel, right? We absolutely know that the way to build a network has been created. We just need to follow it. Now I go to Zig Ziglar. Love Ziglar's law. You can have anything in life that you want if you just help enough other people get what they want. Uh, and Zig was absolutely famous for automobile you. Uh, now I listened to Zig in the 1980s and I'm gonna say at least, and maybe more, when I'm alone in the car, at least 95% of the time, I'm listening to an audio to educate me. And I promise you that that education that I got in my car is worth a few or maybe even more than that extra seven figures in my bank account. You can learn so much on drive time and that's what Zig really promoted. Drive and learn, drive and learn, drive and learn. Don't ever waste the moment. So here's your assignment. Build your automobile you library. So much good stuff on YouTube, so much good audio books. <clears throat> There's no reason for anybody not to become an expert if they want to be. Now we'll go to Tom Morris. I affectionately call him PhD. He got his PhD in philosophy and religion from Yale. He said, I wanted to know what God was thinking. I wanted to know what man was thinking. Uh, and he said, there are seven C's to true success. Clarity, you've got to know what you want. Confidence, you have to have the confidence that you want to get it. For your work sets, consistent, committed concentration. Lock yourself in a room for an hour. Do it consistently. Be committed and concentrate while you're there. And what you do then is basically you collect friends, you collect decisions, then you collect commissions. Uh, and then you have to have character. If you don't have character, it all falls apart. And then be content, love the process. Life is so good. Why don't we love every step of the way? So Tom tells a story, a man was walking down the, the streets of uh, ancient Greece and he had to come across Socrates. Uh, and you know, he asked Socrates, he said, look, what's the most difficult thing to do? And Socrates said, well, to know thyself is the most difficult. He then asked, well, what's the easiest thing to do? He says, well, to give advice, right? Anybody can do that. And then he says, what's most fulfilling? True success. And that true success is those seven seeds. Clarity, uh, contentment, consistent, committed concentration, competence, and character. Uh, and Tom also talks about the 3D approach to life. He says, look, we all have a unique set of talents and what we're here to do is to discover those talents, to develop those talents, and then to deploy those talents for the good of the world as well as yourself. Uh, and I really love that approach. And then we've got Eric Worre, right? His seven skills, finding prospects, inviting, presenting, following up, managing objections, starting strong, and promoting events. Uh, and here's what Eric does always. He under promises, he over delivers. And so what do you do with his seven skills? He gave everybody a free seven skills in seven days, a deep dive on all the seven skills. And then by the way, he extended it too. He added some bonus sessions on the backside and then virtual goal pro, right? They took a, what could have been a, a disaster, right? And built a mega studio uh, and created their biggest event ever where they taught about mindset, skills, strategy, uh, leadership, and then a game plan. So here's your assignment, study and apply the wisdom of the greats. I'm gonna tell you what, all of these greats are truly great. Uh, can you recommend a mentor? Well, I'll tell you what, you start hanging out with the Eric Worre crew and you're gonna find so many people that have figured it out to do it so many ways. Whatever demographic you're in, someone's earned a million dollars in it. So why not connect with that person and figure out how they did it? So here's a principle. All leaders are readers. Uh, Warren Buffett read 500 pages every single day. And he said, you know what? Knowledge compounds just like compound interest. Uh, he was at one time the richest man in the world. So definitely some books to recommend here. Jordan Adler's Beach Money, Art Williams, How to Beat Talent, Brains, and Education. That is an audio book, by the way. Art Williams is a billionaire. That's with a B in network marketing. Eric Worre's GoPro, I recommend reading it again and again. Listen to the audio book again and again. And by the way, one of my tips is when you do a game plan interview with a new prospect, go to his chapter on the game plan interview. I think it's the audio chapter nine. 
I, and play it, right? It's only a nine minute chapter. You play a segment, you know, and the first thing he says, okay, the first thing that Michael Nelson would do is validate the prospect's decision. He'd say, you've made a really good decision. If you apply yourself, your future for, for you and your family is going to be epic. You know, game plan interview part two, right? And then he'd keep going on and on. That's what I did. I've done it many, many times with new signups. Uh, and then Fraser Brooks, right? I dare you and I dare you too. He'll be teaching social media, absolutely phenomenal advice. And Brian Carruthers, creating or building the empire is a phenomenal book. So uh, there was another book that I read. It was called Seven Strategies for Seven Figures by Matt Morris. And one of his strategies was to read five books. He says, you know, if you read five books on the same topic, you're probably going to be an expert. Well, I decided to dig into that. And uh, here's what the experts say. Three books, you'll be above average. A hundred books that should cover all of the relevant information on the topic. 50 books, you're going to be an expert. Well, guess what? I've read over 150 books on network marketing. And I can tell you, I think it's served me well. So here's your assignment. Read something at least 10 minutes every day that will make you a more valuable networker. So John Maxwell, uh, you know, here's his principle, everything rises and falls on leadership. So I love this definition. I look for several or this quote, leadership is lifting a person's vision to high sites, the raising of a person's performance to a higher standard and the building of a personality beyond its normal limits. So when you think of Martin Luther King as I have a dream speech, the most powerful speech of all time, the most unifying speech of all time, uh, and you know what, you can listen today and you can still hear his passion and his vision. But keep in mind, he said, I have a dream. He didn't say I have a plan. That dream is so powerful. Uh, Dexter Yeager earned over $460 million as a network marketer with Amway. Uh, and we have a team member that was uh, personally sponsored by Dexter. And I said, what was Dexter like? He says, you know what, every time I met him, he said, tell me about your dream. Tell me about your dream. He always wanted to grow my dream and then grow my vision and then grow me. Uh, very good guidelines there. What about performance? Well, let's say that, you know, you were going to have a pickup game and, and Tom Brady was one of the captains. Well, wouldn't you want to be picked by him, right? Or how about LeBron James for pickup basketball? Well, why do we admire these people? They perform, they perform, they perform, they perform, they perform, and they keep performing. Uh, and that's what leaders do. We wanna show up like these guys every single day. And then what about personality, the charisma myth, how anyone can master the art and science of personal magnetism? Three components, absolute presence, right? That's being there with someone. When you're with someone, be there. Don't have a smartphone. It's a weapon of mass distraction. The connection is not going to be anywhere as deep if that is in sight. Be absolutely present. Be powerful. You know, look how powerful Wonder Woman and Superman are. But notice that they're also warm and warmth is the third component. People do business with people they know, like, and trust. It's hard to be liked if you're a cold fish, right? Or, you know, so have your own unique brand of warmth. Very powerful statement here by Wayne Dyer. He says, the law of attraction is this, you don't attract what you want, you attract what you are. So here's your assignment. Make a list of all the qualities that you're looking for in a prospect and become the epitome of every single item on your list. So Eric Worre had a couple of blog posts. Haley Hobson had some blog posts right? Leaders have a philosophy, vision. They are able to share their vision. They're competent. They lead by example. Haley said leaders have to be competent, capable, committed, coachable, and good communicators, right? How fun is that? All those five C's. And what about an influencer? Eric says they're independent. They create action. They have vision, focus, and they solve problems. So how well do you fit those uh, criteria? And what others do you want to add? Become that and you'll attract that. Jim Rohn's magic advice, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. And ultimately, when you become better, you attract better. And in this business, when you attract better, everything gets better. John Harimza had a really nice uh, slide that I copied it just like that, right? There was Jim Rohn's quote. And here's what I know. A healthier, happier goose is likely to lay more golden eggs. Uh, Simon Sedek, one of the most popular TED Talks of all time, start with why, he says everything su should radiate from your why. And I'm going to transition this to another concept. You know, people sometimes say, well, I don't feel like doing it. 
well, what does that have to do with anything, right? Tom Brady maybe didn't want to play on a particular day or LeBron James. Leaders just keep doing it. Uh, you may not recognize this young guy, right? Muhammad Ali. Uh, basically, what we suggest is you have to be before you can do and do before you can have. Create your identity. Take the actions related to your identity. And then ultimately, you'll have what that identity creates. And Ali was famous for this. I am the greatest. And he said that even before he knew that he was. And ultimately, he became that. Sports Illustrated said he was the greatest athlete of the entire last century. So there's that center. You got to be before you can do and do before you can have. Uh, and certainly, I love Gandhi. Be the change that you want to see in the world. So here's your challenge. Get a little better every single day. Remember your daily method of operation, be a product of your products, collect friends, decisions, and commissions in that order, hopefully in an hour or more of consistent, committed concentration. Invest in yourself every single day, become a master promoter, and especially start promoting the most powerful women in network marketing. Uh, and Eric, you are right. This is a better way. Let's go tell the world.